cares very deeply about things being fair. So that's how you want to play it, old man? No dessert? Oh, sure. We'll eat our dinner right after you eat this. Ah! Right. Here comes an airplane. Ah! Oh, airplane. We got an airplane, everybody. Oh. Yeah. Anger. Anger is an emotion. Um, anger is actually not a bad thing. When it becomes a bad thing is when it becomes unjust. What you have to understand with anger is the difference between just and unjust anger. I'll explain the difference. Um, justice is giving someone what they deserve, giving someone what's right. Um, just anger is you see an injustice. You see something bad in the world and you want to fix it. Think about the Romero movie we just watched uh, not that long ago. Um, Oscar Romero, what made him such a great human being was not that he didn't get angry, is that his anger caused him to want to fix the social ills of his time. Um, an unjust anger is you become angry and you don't want to fix the problem, you just want to get revenge. All right, so I'll give you an example. Let's say someone speaks bad about you behind your back. There are two responses you could have. Response number one is you can have just anger and that you want to fix the wrong that they did. You want to set the record straight and you want to actually be kind and merciful toward the person who harmed you. The second type of anger is unjust anger. You don't want to fix the problem. You don't want to fix what's wrong. You want to get revenge. And the way unjust anger finds its way into the world in this situation is that when someone spreads a rumor, they will spread a rumor right back just about them. Um, they won't try to fix any problems about them. They just want to harm the other person. And that is how unjust anger manifests itself. The number one image we have of this is Jesus in the temple. Remember Jesus, he, he fashions a whip and turns over the money changers' tables and drives it out to people selling animals. The reason is because there was an evil happening, and Jesus used this anger to fix an evil happening. When it comes to lust, we're not going to talk a whole lot about lust today because we're going to get that more in the next chapter. Um, but the main thing you need to understand is the difference between love and lust. We'll talk about this a ton next week. But the difference between love and lust is love is whenever you desire the entire person. You want their mind, you want their soul, you want their body, and you want their, their whole person. You want their good days and bad days. So your wedding vows, for better or worse, for richer and poor, and sickness and health. You want all of them, not just their body. Lust is whenever you want just the body. Um, and so lust is an over-focusing on the pleasure. And so sexual pleasure is actually a good thing. But remember, when these deadly sins, it's focusing too much on a secondary good that your priorities come all whack. So whenever you have a relationship, the most important aspect is to focus on the person themselves. The, second, the, the, the sexual pleasures are secondary. But whenever the sexual pleasure becomes primary and the person becomes secondary, that is whenever lust exists. Um, that is whenever we have no more chastity. The, the uh, heavenly virtue with uh, um, an opposite of lust is called chastity. Chastity is a proper sexuality, a proper view of human sexuality. We'll talk more about chastity and lust next week. Just like in lust, when we focus on the pleasure over the person, gluttony is also focusing on the wrong ends. So think about it, why do we eat food? The reason we eat food is so that we can nurture our bodies. We can fuel these bodies to do great things. Gluttony focuses more on the food, the pleasure that's, that's given from eating and drinking, um, as opposed to the health of the individual. That's why a lot of people, a lot of times when they have gluttony, they will often eat bad things because what's the most important thing? Fueling their body? No, the most important thing is getting pleasure from eating the food and the drink. Um, it's whenever the end result is all out of whack. And so to think about this one, do I have gluttony? Do you focus more on becoming eating to be healthy, or do you focus more on eating to just enjoy eating? Now, can you eat to just enjoy eating? Yeah. I mean, food's good. We're supposed to like and enjoy food. But there comes a point whenever we eat so much food, and the purpose we uh, behind eating the food is just the enjoyment that we just forget about the, uh, the aspect of feeling our bodies. So think about this. Why do I drink this? Because it tastes good. Does it help my body? Not really. Not at all. But it tastes good. But if I have it in moderation, it doesn't harm my body. But if I have a lot of it, I have gluttony. Um, the purpose of this should be to fuel my body, um, but I can still enjoy it. If I'm successfully fueling my body, then, but I'm, I'm not over-focusing on the enjoyment of it, I'm not having gluttony. 
The opposite of gluttony is abstinence. Abstinence is to be able to go without. So when it comes to good food and good drink, those, those are good things. You should be able to have them, but you have to have the ability to abstain from them. You have to have the ability to go without. If you feel like you need to have this food, I need to have this drink. If you see that delicious food in front of you and you have to have it, gluttony, it's got a grip on you. And that is one of the deadly sins that you have to focus on getting rid of. So this is my son, Philip. He is playing Roblox right now. Every afternoon, as long as they get their work done, they get tech time. And for his tech time, he loves to play Roblox. And why is it a morally good thing for him to be doing this? Because he got his homework done. The thing about the, the final deadly sin, uh, sloth, is the concept that rest is actually a good thing. Um, rest is an important thing. Playing games, uh, having downtime is not a bad thing at all. Um, it becomes a sin when it becomes the focus of what do we do. Um, the opposite of sloth is called diligence. Diligence is getting done what you need to get done. Remember, rest is essential. That's why God made the Sabbath. Like Human beings are built. We are created to need rest. Um, sloth is taking the good of rest and making the focus of our lives. So essentially, the reason why this Sabbath exists is so that we can go out to our lives. Same thing with the Mass. The whole, um, the whole origin behind the word Mass is means to go out, to be sent forth. The reason the Mass exists is to impact the rest of our day. The Sabbath exists to impact the, the rather other six days of our week. Um, a, a bad mentality of this is to switch it all around and say, the six days are meant for the Sabbath. The reason why we work... You know the old song, everybody's working for the weekends? That is the mentality behind sloth. It's all about rest. It's all about enjoyment. It's all about taking it easy. Right? Um, whenever we have sloth, we, we tend to grow the Sabbath. We tend to work less and less and less and less. So remember, the deadly sins in general are taking a good thing and, and having it all out of focus. It's taking a lesser good and making it more important than the greater good. And that's what sloth is. Sloth is taking the good of rest and making it more important than the good of diligence.